Hello and welcome. With this video, I will introduce you to the user interface of Wappler version 4. But first up, what is Wappler? Wappler is a visual web and mobile apps building tool. It allows you to quickly design and build powerful custom websites and apps, such as custom CMS systems for blogs, e-commerce, admin panels, user management systems and more. Even interactive maps can be created using Wappler. Wappler is a standalone desktop app for Windows, Mac OS and Linux so you can download it and use it on your computer. Wappler gives you complete freedom of publishing. You are in control of all the source code, have full access to it and can use any hosting provider of your choice for your websites and apps. Congratulations, you have taken the first step by downloading and installing Wappler. When you start Wappler, you are confronted with three possible actions. Create a new project. Clone an existing project. Open an existing Wappler project. Normally you would start by creating a new project. But as an experienced user, you may have a project stored as a Git repository. It could be that you are an existing Wappler, in which case you would choose one of your projects. For this example, I will choose to open my demonstration project. This is so that I can go through the Wappler interface with you. Wappler's user interface is minimal, intuitive and easy to use. It consists of a number of panels, needed in your workflow. But before I discuss the panels, there are a number of functions that apply to the Wappler program. Starting top, left, there is the main menu hidden behind the Wappler logo. The plus button allows for the creation of a new document. If a document of a different type needs to be created, I click on the down arrow button. Moving along the top of the screen, I come across the name of the project. Then comes the pencil icon. This allows me to set the project options. This project was created about a year ago, hence Bootstrap 4. The interface of the target screen may differ from what you see for your project. This is dependent on the hosting type and the server model. The down arrow allows me to choose an existing project. The plus sign allows me to create a new project. On the right is a button that allows me to change the theme for Wappler. I find that the dark theme is the easiest on my aging eyes. I have wondered why this option was placed here and not in the options panel. As I believe it, this makes it easier to change the theme depending on the ambient light. The ambient can, of course, change throughout the day. Going bottom left, we come across the general options for Wappler. Here you can customize different settings such as, code editor, design view, FTP, system and more. Lastly we come across the avatar of a handsome person. This shows your account details as well as a link for support. I strongly recommend paying a visit to the Wappler community on a regular basis. This is a great learning resource. On the left, we see a number of icons in the toolbar. These icons all refer to the back end of the website. As each icon is clicked upon, it will open the corresponding panel. To keep this video as short as possible, I will only refer to the function of each panel without going into detail. Future videos will go into a deeper detail of each of these panels. This is the File Manager panel. The first tab allows us to see the files for the front end of the site. The second tab shows the Assets Manager showing the images of the current project. The last tab shows all of the files in the project. Here you can manage the local and remote files and folders. This is the Git Manager. This panel provides version control options in Wappler. You can create a Git repository for every Wappler project you wish to keep track of. Having a repository is a great way to have a good backup of all your project files and their changes. Then comes the Workflows panel. With this panel, you define your server workflows. Connect to your databases, work with dynamic data, send emails, manage files and folders, process images, create login systems and more. The Database Manager allows you to easily preview all your database tables, history of your changes, and database seeds. You can create new tables and fields or edit the data in your database. The routing panel allows you to create SEO-friendly URLs for your websites, using the visual URL rewriting options. The theme manager allows you to customize the style and create your own version of the design framework used in your project. Using the search panel you can do a site-wide search, or search and replace. The search results are displayed in the panel, so you can see them directly. When a page is opened, it has also opened a panel on the right. 
This panel is related to the page, design and front-end workflows. The first tab is referred to as, app structure. This is one of the most important parts of Wappler and probably the most used one. This is where you design the website, or app structure, and appearance. Add elements and components on the page, adjust their dedicated properties in the properties panel. The design panel provides you with visual tools to style your page content. Here you can adjust the layout, position, text, background, colors, borders and many other CSS properties for any element on the page. You can design for different screen sizes, which creates the required styles and media queries for the selected device. The styles panel allows you to write your own custom CSS rules, if you ever feel the need to write your own CSS by hand. Unlike the app structure panel, which shows you only the components and properties of the frameworks you are using on your page, the DOM panel gives access to all common HTML elements and their properties or attributes. This is where you will find properties that were not available in the app structure panel. At the bottom of the screen, I open the Publish and Console panel. This is a multifunctional panel which changes depending on the hosting type and target. In this case, the only target that has been specified is the based on the local Docker engine. Here I have a number of controls to manipulate the Docker host. If the target had been set to a remote host, the options would enable me to publish the site. Towards the right, we come across a number of other options. These will be explained in more detail in future videos. This brings me to the design canvas. Starting top left, there are the undo and redo buttons. The camera takes a copy of the page. This makes the site more recognizable in the project manager. The responsive options not only show what the page looks like on different devices, but also sets the responsive classes for the framework. The Thunderbolt detaches App Connect from the view. The preview mode makes the design view act as a browser and react to clicks as they would in a browser. This is to open the page in a browser. If you want to view the page in your mobile device, you can create a QR code. Taking a copy of the QR code in the mobile device will show the page. There is also a refresh button. Along the bottom there is the error reporting section. If there are any JavaScript or connection errors on the page or wrong HTML or missing files, they will be displayed here. And that is it for this introduction to Wappler version 4. I will continue to create more videos for Wappler version 4, this time, in more detail. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will be notified when the next video is released. My name is Ben Pleasier. Thank you for watching.